in your life? No, okay. it's alive. Yeah. Now it says we're alive. Welcome everybody to this uh, super special episode with the author herself. Uh, the, an episode of the ACP Book Dragons. So we are so happy to have you, Katarina Valentin, with us. The author of, if you guys remember, if you've been following us and if you've been listening to our lives and videos, we started off with your books, Katarina, about a year ago. And we reviewed your book and it's one of our personal favorites and we've received so much from it. It's so happy to have you on. Um, thank you so much for coming. The author of the Manifesto Books. Right? Are we calling them the Manifesto books? Yeah, the, we're calling them the trilogy is called the Manifesto books. You are correct. The trilogy is called the Manifesto books. And there's a third book in the trilogy, and it's beautiful. I just got my copy today, and I'm, I've been looking at it, and wow, it's just beautiful. So, wow, thank you so much for coming on. Can you tell us about what is it that got you inspired to kind of get this out in the world? And when did this all start? Well, it's actually, so these manifesto books, they're, they're actually called the baby manifesto books. They're written by Dane here and myself together. And the very first book was, it was uh, a friend of ours, the PR, PR person for Access Consciousness, Justine McCall. She had her first baby and she had been waiting for this baby for such a long time. And, you know, the baby had been around, even though it wasn't around, it's been in her stomach. So it's been around all of us. And when, when it came, Dane wrote this beautiful text to Justine, but really to the baby, right? So that was, and that was that text message from Dane. That was the very beginning that, so it was so beautiful. And I took that text message. I'm like, okay, this really, this needs to be put in like a, a context, Mm -hmm. So we wrote it. It became the very first book. It was called The Baby Unicorn Manifesto. And that book is really about when you all the things that you should be told when you're born that most of us are not, like how amazing you are and what a gift it is that you come into the world and how happy we are that you're here now and how everyone around you has your back. And, you know, this is your life. What would you like to do with it? So, and it, it all is the setting of this little unicorn and what happens when a unicorn is born and how all the other unicorn comes galloping, you know, to say hello. So it's, it's really for that kind of like that youngest, the youngest age group um, of kids. And then we wrote that and people really loved it. And then we started to look at, not everyone really is a unicorn. And I didn't feel like a unicorn at all. <laughs> I always always felt like I'm not cute and like cuddly that way, it, even though other people may say I am, but I didn't have that sense. I always felt like I said the wrong things or stumbled into things and I was awkward and I did things backwards. So we wanted to write another book about a dragon, kind of like what happens when children turn two, you know, when they start saying no that other energy, like, no, I don't want to do that <laughs> when they're not like cuddly unicorns. So we wrote the second one, which was called the Baby Dragon Manifesto. And that is what happens when a dragon is born and accidentally sets the whole glade on fire, the first thing it does. And, you know, it's a little more humorous, has a bit more of an edge than the first book and really invites people to embrace that capacity that we have to be the fire and the flame and the all and the source for change, you know, that the thing that goes through the world and it really makes things spark and shift in a more dynamic way. So that was like the baby dragon manifesto brought that other energy in. And then after that, we had so many suggestions of different mythical animals that we should write books about. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody had a suggestion of who the next one should be. And we kept like looking at it in all different kinds of ways. And then and then more and more, I think the world changed, a lot of other things changed, and and the earth just became more and more present in everything. So finally we really wanted to write the last manifesto in this trilogy about the earth. And that's how the Baby Stardust Manifesto came about, which is really, I used the word really a lot, but which is about um, how, like, how the stardust within all of us, within the earth, is really, that baby stardust is what 
makes us all come alive, including the earth, including all the plants, including, you know, all of us, because we're all made of that stuff of stars. So that last book is really, it has a much bigger um, entry point, because the entry point is, how did the earth come about? And how come we're all part of it? And how come the earth is in all of us and we're in all, we're inside the earth? So, yeah. That was a very quick summary of the manifesto books. Yeah. And if I, may, if I may add, um, this these books are they speak to you, and I don't think they're kids' books. I mean, even if they're called, even if they are in the category of kids' books, they speak so to you. I mean, it's like that warm mug of hot chocolate in a cold wintry night. You know, it's like it's that. It's so it like speaks to you. And I think all of us, when this book came out, I remember one of the first times when it came out. Um, it was like, yeah, it was sold as a kid's book in, I mean, what I had heard and what we had heard, like, but we all got it. And I remember each one of us speaking about how much it spoke to you. So, I mean, just the art of putting such complex, big uh, energies, for the lack of better words, in these, I mean, it's just 20, 25 pages and you go through an entire saga of what, yes. you know, like it is conveying to you, like, I'm personally a fan, and thank it you so much. Funny. Well, it's funny you say that, because Dana and I had a lot of conversation, especially with the last book, about if it's a yeah. children's book, or if it is a book for adults, but the children within us, the child that we continuously mm -hmm. are. And and I think most of us don't really feel like adults. Yeah. <laughs> we do in one way, but in another way, we're still that kid that we once were, and we're still that teenager, like the awkward dragon teenager that we once were and so we all have that and in the books are not but if they were children books they would probably use a slightly easier vocabulary the storyline would not be as complex as it is so you are correct it, it really is a book for all ages and it is a book that's meant for adults to read to children so that they maybe have a conversation about the ideas in the book and and that adult can kind of explain and also um, add their own take on being a unicorn or a dragon or or how the stardust comes alive. So you are so correct. Like it really is meant for any age, any age that still remembers what it is like to be a child or to just come alive. And I, I love this um, thing that it has such few words because books, usually people are used to seeing books are about words, 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 words right? And um, this, this book has such few words, but like when you read it, there's, I mean, each one of these, it's like there's a whole world of information that just pours in with the book. So it's really mm -hmm. like as if like, you know, the adults and children are kind of like, um, they're looking at the sky at the same time because to the sky, it's not, a, you know, it's the sky doesn't, doesn't differentiate between a child and an adult like we do and uh you know and it's like uh the whole information is and it's so beautiful to have this information available um on the you know yeah on the planet actually thank yeah. you and and i mean every um it is interesting because every word is actually chosen. Like from the beginning, there's a story, but we switched and changed so many of the words to make that, like to make that it's an energetic scent. Every sentence is, has an energy to it that we would like to convey. So we switch them around and we move this here and does this really convey it and do people really get this? So it was a, it's like a dance with the energetic of words. And then we were, extremely lucky to find this illustrator that we've been using for all three books and she's from Argentina and we found her really by accident I was looking for an illustrator and I was searching online for children books illustrators and it was this whole page of different illustrators I was like oh which which ones which ones work we tried a few for the unicorn book and either they were too cute or they were too realistic like they, they really were drawing them as like unicorns with, you know, or they were like these really, really chubby, cute unicorns that didn't really work either. So when we found this person, <laughs> I forgot her name, so I have to say her name because that's really important. I'm going to find her name so we don't forget it. So it's Natalie Bebois, and she really has this capacity of 
looking at the energetics of the words and then translating that into the illustrations that are used. And if you look at all three books, they're very different. It's the same illustrator, but all the books have a different style. Lots, lots of illustrators would use the same style, but she has chosen even different kind of um, medias. Like in the first book, I think she uses more drawings. And then in the second book, it's like a collage form that she's like been painting on top of. And in the third book, she went like all into the, you know, the watercolors. And so it's just amazing to see how she has interpreted what the energetics that you're perceiving in the words, Shivam, like how she's taken those and then put them into pictures. So that's a big process of these books too. It's like the fourth and back with the illustrator, making sure that each of the illustrations and where we want to go has that energy. The last phase in the Stardust book, I think we changed it five times to get that because <laughs> we wanted, because the word is happy. And she really, first she looked like crazy happy and that didn't work. And then she looked pensive and too sad and that didn't work. So we had to like find, how do you find that sense of happy? It's not that easy. So you have to like, yeah, the very, yeah, the very last one where we wanted to, you give to the earth is like being happy. So all this time, like working with the illustrator, like once we have the story and the words, then you work with that illustrator to actually find that energy in each of the illustrations as well. And they go together. And that's partly why it's very different than a book that only contains words, because here you do have the pictures. And this is how the book looks like if you would buy yeah. it um, as a book book, if you, because they are all looking at their little pads. So you can buy it as an ebook, but you can also buy it as a book book. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think we kind of delayed buying the book because uh, the lockdown of, was go going on and we were like, you know what, I'm going to buy the hard book. And I think that happened with all three of us. And it was like, yeah. I think we better buy the Kindle one now that we're doing this conversation. And I'm really uh, happy to think Kindle. Like, I'm really happy that you can buy it online. But then I would say... Yeah, so the style. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, gift, I gift a lot of these and then I like gifting it as a hard copy yeah. book. Yeah. And it's it's a it's a book like I I have it I mean the first two books the hard copy I have those in my living room so it's like it's very interesting like my mother would yeah. flip through it or people who come they flip through it. Table book, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and and I love reading it and and it's like once in a while there'll be like I mean when there'll be one participant or someone who'll be like curious about it and I'll just say like do you want me to read it to you and I will read it to them or, you know the book and it's like it's such a changing process like everybody is just like left in tears and happiness and joy yeah. of like happiness, which is um it just changes so many things for everybody a colleague of ours marnie baranko she yeah. used to have this uh, the unicorn book laying on her kitchen table like you you know out and her teenage like her boys i think teenage friends would come around and they all wanted her to read it to them so I think it's because it speaks to something. It really has something in it that we all should have heard or needed to hear at some point of our life. And when we hear it, it resonates. Like there's some kind of frequency in the books that resonates with something that allows us to, like you say, become happy or even feel heard or seen or have that sense like tapping into the earth. So. Yeah, it's a great book to have laying. If you, if you want to introduce access in a different way, those books are wonderful because they're so yeah. subtly, like such a subtle, soft imitation to the idea of consciousness. And so the, and the voice of, you know, the, the dragons, uh, that was my favorite book. <laughs> the three <laughs> dragons. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and and how everyone goes through all of those phases, like all these books sort of could apply to one single person as well through different phases of life and how they sort of speak to exactly where you're at and you know exactly which page and you open to it and it's got the energies for oh, the space that it opens up and the colors and it's so beautiful. <laughs> It's funny with the with the three dragon voices, if you guys haven't, I mean, if you're listening to this and you haven't read it, but in the dragon book, the little baby dragon hears three different voices. And I remember when I was writing those voices, it really was that I wanted there to be 
it's like the the laughter like the joy because joy really allows us to hear something in a very different way so i wanted it to be kind of funny and kind of like pushing a little bit and a lot of people really enjoy that part of those books because it is what kind of voices we hear in our heads too yeah <laughs> we do hear those kind of voices in our head and well, there will be like one one saintly voice and then there will be one that is born everything like go for it <laughs> Yeah, that's so joyous. <laughs> that you know. <laughs> and, and their expressions in each page is just so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, the, the Dragon Book is one of my favorites. Too. I, I mean, I adore all three of them. They're very different. But the Dragon Book satisfies some kind of part of me that yeah. always wants to tell that that was there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Finally fine. laughs> And I think I actually read the book. I probably sent you a message about it because I love the part where the baby dragon goes like, I mean, it, it sets something on fire, and, and then it's like, oops, did I do it? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, that is pretty much what my, you know, like the first several years of my life has been like, did I do it? Like, good time, but, but I did it, you know, and um, such a gift. Well, I think it's funny that you say, because there is something with, in general, with access consciousness for me, that finally we get to talk about all those things we kind of know, but nobody has ever said out loud before. Mm -hmm. So again, like, it's it's that thing where, in the Dragon Book especially, we say, oh, did I do that? Oh, I did that. I actually did that. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. But that thing where it's not something that has to be hidden, it's just something that is. And it's as yeah. beautiful and as necessary for like you know things to change and shift to, to set things on fire at times and it's not wrong like all these books are so much about how it's not wrong like how actually you are not wrong and you can you know you are a contribution in the way you be here on the earth or in, you know in this world right now but that part being able to say that but using this voice of a children's book allows it also for people to receive it again it's like sneaks its way in hopefully <laughs> and it's not preachy like like some of the fairy yeah. tales are quite preachy in the way they sort of tell you that it's not wrong they tell you to understand that it's not wrong but <laughs> this one's more like instead of being told you're taken through the journey of it and it's it's yeah. not there's no justification in it and it's so beautiful with like that space i guess like it's, you, like, it, it's like a book for humanoids because we're not we don't work well when we're told anything like anytime right. anybody tells us we kind of tell them fuck off and you know go we'll, we'll not receive it but if you you know if you sneak it in if if they get it then it may actually enter there it's such them. a gentle invitation to more like it facilitates you to know what you know like and through the pictures and not just the words i mean yeah it's we've we're all such a fan and like yeah i also wanted to speak about i mean i know this book is about the 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 baby books but then i also want to speak about your podcast and what like that like creates the world because it's about possibilities and these books are about possibilities and i've I've been following them and I think they're beautiful. So we'll make sure that the link is also available and you guys can. So can you speak about what's that been for you? Like what got you to, because it's probably during, what was it a few months ago that you started that? And yeah. yeah so. Well, I so yeah, I used to do a, a podcast called Big Better Best Books. And I used to actually talk about books kind of like you ah. do, but all kind of all, I did that for a year and I really enjoyed it. And it, had some kind of limitation to it. And so I spent some time looking at, okay, what would I really like my podcast to be about? And I realized that I really wanted to explore possibilities. And I wanted to explore the potency of actually looking at possibilities. And it, it all went back to this this movie, Tomorrowland. I don't know if you guys have yeah. seen it, the Disney movie. And, and that movie is based on the old... Native American myth about the two different wolves. Like, and mm -hmm. it is about like you have two wolves in your head. One is like angry, despair, hopelessness. And the other wolf is hope, possibilities, and uh, really um, the, the joy of living. And, and then the, in the fable, like, or in the Native American story, the 
grandson asks his grandpa, which wolf will win? And the grandpa says, the wolf you feed. So the podcast is called Feeding the Wolf of Possibility. And the idea is that we are really at this threshold in the world where it matters which wolf we feed. And the wolf we feed is the wolf that will win. And we all have a role in that. We all, like depending on if we are choosing to feed the wolf of despair or feed the wolf of possibility, the world will become different. Our future will become different. And then did this brilliant, um, like he was on Indian TV recently, yeah. and really talked a lot about that, how we have at our fingertips this power and potency to choose which wolf we're feeding. Like if we're going to feed that possibility and hope, or if we're going to feed despair and everything is going to go to hell in a handbasket point of view. So what I'm doing is I'm basically finding different people and they can be using the access consciousness tools or not. Like I'm looking everywhere for people that are looking for possibilities, are choosing possibilities, are willing to have the point of view that something different is possible. And then I have a conversation with them about wow. possibilities. So that's like the, and, and I've loved it. It's, it's like the yeah. podcast I continuously want to do and I'm so happy you're following it. That sounds amazing. And I would love more people to follow it. Yeah. Just because I like people to listen and then get that sense. Yes, because they're is. classes by themselves. Like I've I've heard to a few of them, and it's just, and just just what you just spoke about. You know, we always have the choice. Like which which wolf are we feeding, and you know what we'd like to. And I was like, wow, they they've been amazing. And I think like everyone should be make sure that we have the link available and people listen to it. They they've been such a gift. So thank you so much for that. Do you guys have another question? Katrina, is there anything else you'd like to speak um, about, like with everything that's going on in India and like the people who are watching and is there anything you'd like to speak to them about? Like, what is it that you'd like to say to them? Well, since we are talking about the possibilities and, and also tipping into um, them being on TV, what I do find with India is that it is such an amazingly big country. So, Yes, there's a lot of stories about despair and there's a lot of things going on in India. But what I find is there is an amazing capacity in India to tap into possibility. And you also have, like what Dane mentioned when he talked about energy, mm. that there is actually receiving and willingness to hear about something completely different. It is a country that functions from chaos way more than where I come from with, the, with Sweden that functions from order <laughs> where everything is like it should be this way and this way and you know well India has way more of that creative chaos that really has the capacity to shift and change things at a different level for for the country but also for the world so I would say that if you're listening to this right now and you are in India which I'm guessing you are since we're like in the India Facebook group um, you matter so much for what future is created. And it doesn't mean you have to be perfect and happy all the time at all. You can be like miserable and angry and cranky and all of that. The only thing that matters is that you keep asking and keep keep like taking that more step and look for another possibility and keep asking those questions and keep being interesting point of view, which allows things to shift and change. And I think we all like right now, I think in the world, it matters so much who we choose to be and what we choose to be and what, what we ask questions about and that we ask the questions continuously. So I I find that the way you, everyone in India keep asking for more and keep like, I don't know how you got Dane on that TV, but that, yeah. was awesome. that was amazing. And that is created by all of you asking and demanding for it. So I, I enjoy that very much. And so I'm just so grateful that you are all using these tools and that you're all looking for another possibility. So I guess that's, yeah, <laughs> that's what I wanted to say. That's, that's so awesome. amazing. And, and also it's just sort of such a beautiful place in time that we're at. So yeah, thank you so yeah. much. Thank you all. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And there is like, maybe maybe we'll, we'll invite you for that conversation because that's, these are not the only books you've written and these are not the only children books you've written. So, yeah. <laughs> and, I'm and, so and, and, and thank you for creating that. Please have been such a gift to all of you. All of them. 
Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And uh, go forth and be possibilities. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, ladies. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. And we hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>